Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 28th, 2022, around 1230 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including more tropical cyclones in the East Pacific Basin and just exactly what to expect for the remainder of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Will we have a big storm or is it going to be a major flop? Let's go and find out. Jumping into everything, taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that most of the basin is pretty quiet right now. That is certainly some good news. Do we have a pretty decent, healthy-looking tropical wave that is in the south-central main development region at this point? This is not really expected to develop too much dry air and just overall hostile conditions, but this will be moving westward over the next few days and could bring some rain to portions of the Lesser Antilles as it begins to enter the weekend and into portions of next week. Now, taking a look at the weather forecast from the viewer submissions that we received yesterday, first of all, look at Houston, Texas for today. First of all, we have for the daytime temperature 92 degrees with a low of 79, 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon, south wind about 10 miles per hour for the evening, again, 79 degrees, temperature of, or temperature 79, south wind about 10 miles per hour and a chance of rain about 10%. For Raleigh, North Carolina today, heat advisory for the area, 97, 97 degrees, 97 degrees, that is very warm, Zero degree, uh, 0% chance of showers and thunderstorms, west wind about 10 miles per hour. And for the evening forecast, 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, 76 degrees, and a west wind of 5 miles per hour. And for Lanchester, Pennsylvania, we have 89 degrees with a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon, west wind at 10 miles per hour. And for the evening, low of 70, 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms with a west wind of 5 miles per hour. And finally, Spring Hill, Florida, 93 degrees, 20% 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon and evening. Southeast wind at 5 miles per hour. And for the overnight forecast, 0% chance, 74 degrees, partly cloudy with a northwest wind of 5 miles per hour. In the East Pacific Basin, we do have more tropical systems. First of all, we have Tropical Storm Frank with maximum sustained winds uh, right now of about 50 miles per hour or so. This is expected to become a 105 mile per hour hurricane as we approach uh, this weekend. So this is a high-end category uh, to a hurricane that this is expected to be. And then we also have a new tropical storm, Georgette, here, 080E. This is also a tropical storm with sustained winds of near 55 miles per hour. Maximum peak intensity is expected to be 60 miles per hour before weakening. If you look at the visible satellite imagery for both of these systems today, we notice that generally both of these systems are pretty well organized today. We notice that overall Frank over here, which is the furthest east system right here, is pretty well organized most of that convection has actually begun to tuck under the low-level circulation, which indicates a reduced vertical shear pattern that we are experiencing right now. And then also we noticed here with Georgette, it's a very small, compact, uh, low-level system right there. But if we actually look at the forecast again from the National Hurricane Center, uh, both of these systems are supposed to interact with each other over the next couple of days. We can see Frank over here is expected to be moving towards the northwest and will become a Category 2 hurricane uh, before pretty substantially weakening. Um, due to the pretty dry air and overall after this interaction uh, with Frank, uh, these or after this interaction with Georgette, both of these systems are expected to rapidly weaken um, as we head throughout the next couple of days. But again, Frank is expected to be a Category 2 hurricane well offshore, no threats to Mexico at this particular moment in time. So that is certainly some good news there. In the Atlantic Basin, what will we be expecting over the next couple of weeks? Well, first of all, this is the GFS forecast, the 850 millibar vorticity. So the spin in the atmosphere at 5,000 feet off the ground. We notice that this is the 60 run. Again, there's nothing really expected over the next couple of days. We do have some pretty strong tropical waves that emerge off the coast of Africa uh, over the next few days. And this is generally a result. There is something interesting here in the long range. Uh, now, if we jump to the, the GFS ensembles, it is something to kind of keep in mind if we actually look at the ensemble mean sea level pressure at this time. Uh, again, generally speaking, if we back this to the 6C run, we notice that in the very long range, there actually is some enhanced areas of low pressure down there in the deep tropics, in the Caribbean especially. Now, whether or not this is just convective bias in the overall GFS forecast, just being, well, the GFS and producing phantom hurricanes, or whether this is a legitimate signal remains to be determined, and we would need this to continue moving up in time uh, and trending closer to reality 
uh, as we progress over the next few days. This has come about August 7th. Now, this isn't untypical, this area this, for that time of the year. So I would not be surprised, but it is just kind of something to keep in mind. But it's a little too early right now for any sort of uh, speculation on that at the moment. But there's more to what meets the eye here than what we're just seeing on the model forecast. We actually have to look at the now kind of some of the now casting elements that kind of go into this. So we actually look here at the sea surface temperature anomaly pattern. This is off the NSEP uh, OSEP version. So this is a little bit more down to reality of what we're seeing. This does not factor in the overall global mean, uh, but generally speaking, there is a pretty decent correlation here with regards to what we're seeing. So we have warming in the deep tropics and then also we have cooling in most of the subtropics where it matters. And then we have all this warmth up here in the high seas of the North Atlantic. This basically helps to strengthen a North Atlantic ridge, that ridge over troubled waters. And that helps to amplify the pattern for United States and Caribbean uh, tropical cyclone impacts. So that's something we've been talking about over the last few weeks and months. And that's something that we're starting to see come to fruition at this particular point. Uh, but overall, there's not really anything super significant right now. Uh, the main development region will continue to warm uh, as we persist with westerly wind. And we can also see uh, what's happening down there with the moisture profile. This is the European forecast, valid for 8 p.m. Uh, this evening. We notice that, again, right now in the deep tropics, it is pretty dry across there. There is some moisture here, but it, overall, it's pretty really dry, honestly. It's just pretty dry all around. And that pattern is expected to continue for the next couple of days until about the next week or so. But notice what starts to happen here by about August 12th. We start to have that intertropical conversion zone light up across the board. And notice all of the dry air basically goes bye-bye. And that dry air is nowhere to be found. Uh, Africa is pretty moist as well. And that just translates to a big conveyor belt of moisture that moves off into the Atlantic Basin helping to kind of reinforce these tropical waves as they move out, you know, into the Atlantic. And subsequently after that, the upper level environment at this time looks to be relatively favorable. There actually isn't really a lot of shear until you start getting over to the Caribbean. Now, again, some of this is also background noise. You can kind of see some of these westerly winds here. Some of this is probably background noise, but overall the conditions are pretty favorable until you start getting near the islands. But uh, we'll have to see kind of how that progresses again. August 11th into the August 12th, it's still a little too early for significant main development region activity, but we'll be watching that very carefully because I think you know, we are going to have a backloaded uh, season and certainly September and October could be extremely busy as well. So that's just kind of something to keep in mind. Again, hurricane preparedness plans, generally speaking, you need to just be ready for an evacuation. You need to be, uh, you know, stocking up on supplies, you know, medical, you know, kits, um, you know, medication, etc. Uh, you know, extra money, uh, any significant valuables that you might want to take along if you're in a hurricane evacuation zone. And even inland, you need to be preparing for the threat of tornadoes, high winds, and as well for the potential of freshwater rainfall flooding. So that's pretty significant as well. All right. So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.